GIMP versus Inkscape, which one should you use? Well, both are going to be great free and open source software options that can replace expensive premium or subscription programs. However, there appears to be a decent amount of confusion as to which program you should use based on what you need out of a program. As a result, I have decided to put together this video to help shed some light on which program will work best for you based on the kind of work or professional projects you're doing. So let's dive in starting with Inkscape. The Inkscape program, by definition, is an open source drawing tool for creating and editing SVG graphics. In layman's terms, Inkscape is a program used for drawing scalable vector graphics. This means that graphics drawn within Inkscape are formula or code based and thus can be infinitely scaled up or down without any loss of quality. It should be mentioned that although Inkscape uses SVG graphics, it can also import raster or bitmap graphics for use within vector designs. In other words, you can bring photos into your Inkscape design projects, though the photos are typically already edited in another program such as GIMP prior to being brought in. Inkscape typically saves to vector-based file types, including .svg and .eps, though it can also export to common file types such as .png and .pdf. It does not export to .jpeg, which is kind of a big drawback, at least in my opinion. Plus, Inkscape can be exported to code documents such as .html, as well as to animation files such as .sif. So all that being said, when should Inkscape be used? Vector graphics, or also known as SVG graphics, are best used when drawing shapes, curves, and text as they produce clean lines and can be resized or manipulated at any time without quality loss. Plus, the color of these objects can be changed much more easily, usually with one or two clicks, which makes it more efficient for creating multiple color versions of a design or for going back and changing a design's color at a later date. This is why designing a logo is typically best left to an SVG graphics program like Inkscape, Additionally, any shape or text-based artwork should be done in Inkscape, especially when that artwork is going to be printed or will need to be made available in a variety of sizes. Inkscape is most similar to Adobe Illustrator, which also uses scalable vector graphics. Who should use Inkscape? Well, graphic designers, marketers, business professionals, and vector artists should all use Inkscape. Also, anyone who needs to print digital designs or send designs to a printer will prefer Inkscape over GIMP unless you're printing photos. Finally, web designers or web user interface designers who prefer to directly code their designs into their websites will find Inkscape useful. So what about GIMP? GIMP by definition, which stands for the GNU Image Manipulation Program, is a multi-platform photo manipulation tool. It is used primarily for photo editing and photo manipulation, though it can sometimes be used for graphic design as well, as I've shown in many of my tutorials. It uses raster graphics or a bitmap for display display and editing purposes, meaning everything is displayed as pixels in a rectangular pixel grid. When you zoom in on a design or photo within GIMP, you'll notice that every color in the image corresponds to a pixel. The number of pixels in a composition will depend on the overall resolution of the composition or simply the dimensions of the image. GIMP can open up and export to a variety of file types, but the most common file types used in GIMP include .xef, GIMP's native file format, which allows you to save and reopen works that contain layers, .jpeg, of course, which is probably the most common file type, PNG, GIF, and even, yes, PSD files, which stands for Photoshop document. All right, so when should GIMP be used? Raster graphics are best used when editing or manipulating photos, as well as for digital painting. This is because each individual pixel can be manipulated or drawn, giving you much more flexibility and control. You can perform tasks such as adjusting image colors, adding brightness or contrast, sharpening, adjusting color temperature, increasing or decreasing color saturation, or adding a variety of effects that manipulate the image pixels in some form or another. As a result, GIMP is best used as and most famous for being a photo editor. GIMP can also be used for digital painting and pixel art. It produces better freehand strokes than Inkscape, which needs to convert lines to vector shapes, and thus when combined with a drawing tablet, feels more like natural painting or drawing. You can also use artistic brush heads to emulate textures or various paint brushes or pens. The built-in paint tools and brush heads, as well as some third-party plugins such as Gimp Painter or Gimmick, 
really make painting in GIMP super easy and awesome, although a lot of people prefer other programs such as Krita for their digital painting. But when using something like the pencil tool within GIMP combined with a pixel grid, you can draw individual pixels with extreme accuracy, hence why it is recommended for pixel art, which is used in things like game design and other applications. However, the part that gets confusing for some people is that GIMP is also capable of performing certain graphic design tasks. It can draw shapes and curves, for example, though it still does this based on a bitmap, or in other words, based on pixels, whereas Inkscape uses a formula or code for its objects. GIMP can also be used to draw text, though again, the text is displayed using pixels rather than a formula. So although GIMP is capable of creating graphic design elements, these elements are not scalable and often have jagged or pixelated edges when looked at closely. GIMP is most similar to Photoshop, which is also a raster-based photo editing and manipulation manipulation software. Who should use GIMP? Photographers, digital painters and artists, and game designers will all find GIMP extremely useful. Additionally, any marketing professionals or individuals wanting to edit photos or create designs for digital mediums, such as the web, will find GIMP useful also. Some of you may be wondering which program is better. When directly comparing Inkscape and GIMP, it is not a matter of which program is better than the other overall, but rather which program is better than the other for the task at hand. Inkscape is going to perform better than GIMP when it comes to creating scalable and professional graphics. For example, when you're designing branding assets for yourself or a client, it's also better for any shape and vector-based drawing. GIMP, on the other hand, is going to be better than Inkscape when it comes to editing or manipulating photos or for creating pixel art. It's also usually better, in my opinion, when you need to create quick graphics that integrate photos. On the subject of digital art, the program you use will depend on the look you're going for. Inkscape will be better for vector artwork, whereas GIMP will be better for artwork that looks like it was painted or hand-drawn. I definitely recommend using GIMP and Inkscape together as I think they both offer their own strengths, which can be even stronger when combined. For example, you can edit your photos in GIMP and then import the finished JPEG into Inkscape to use within a vector design, maybe a vector logo that you're designing based on a portrait. On the other hand, you can create a vector design and import it into GIMP to be used in a photo, such as a logo watermark to add to the bottom. Another example is that you can create crisp, clean vector graphic icons to use on a website in Inkscape and then import that design file into GIMP to adjust the pixel resolution and compress as a JPEG for better performance on the web. Finally, you can create assets like GIMP palette files or .gpl files within Inkscape and import those palettes to use in your GIMP projects or vice versa. There are many more examples of what you can do by combining these two programs, but I think you get the point. GIMP and Inkscape are both great free options, especially if you're looking to replace Adobe Illustrator and or Adobe Photoshop. All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you can check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.